Hello, I am Paola Brugnara and I am a product engineer in Rotoblast. I am working in the development of soundproofing and alternate solution. Today we are going to talk about uh, acoustic performance of mass timber uh, buildings. Before starting, we need to say that wooden structure, like all lightweight construction, do not have an high acoustic performance at low frequencies. Uh, this does not mean that uh, timber buildings uh, cannot reach a uh, high acoustic performance. It means that uh, we need to work on timber construction in a different way compared to traditional solution. Uh, we need to uh, work with different principles, like the principle of disconnection, in order to avoid the transmission of vibration through the structure. Uh, before starting, I would like to make with you a small experiment uh, with a vibration speaker uh, in order to uh, understand, uh, since the beginning, the, um, the meaning of uh, the principle of desolarization. Uh, we will use uh, this particular type of speakers that uh, uh, transmit uh, the sound uh, vibrating and uh, this it makes that the speaker turns any surface into a speaker so uh, we will uh, try uh, the speaker on different surfaces uh, in order to understand how uh, the vibration propagates to different materials okay uh, the test consists in uh, using uh, this particular type of uh, loudspeaker uh, we will put that on different surfaces and we will hear how the propagation works. We will have an um, OSP panel, we will have a metal element and we will have metal element with a uh, resilient acoustic profile. I need to use this metal element because we need to load in the, uh, the profile. So let's try. On wood. on metal element you can hear that the frequency is changed and with acoustic profile can you hear the difference between this one and this one Now we will understand why it happened. Okay, uh, before starting, I would like to clarify the uh, relationship between ISTM and ISO standard, uh, because maybe some of you is more familiar with uh, ISTM metrics and others with ISO standards. Uh, ISO standards are recommended where there is no ISTM counterpart. Uh, during our presentation, we will uh, use uh, ISO 12354 and ISO 10848. Uh, both of these standards does not have an STM counterpart. Uh, for this reason, uh, the ISO standard uh, will be translated to STM metrics. So the the calculation will not change too much. Um, in uh, timber buildings, uh, it is very important to consider the uh, flanking transmission because it affects the final performance. If we install a wall into a building, we will not have the performance that we have measured in the laboratory, uh, but we will have a worst performance. This is to the fact that we don't have just the direct transmission that we have measured in the laboratory, but we have also the flanking transmission because uh, the vibration produced into the building uh, propagates not just through the uh, wall that divides the two rooms, but it propagates also uh, through 
all the other part of the structure. And all these uh, paths in, in which uh, the vibration propagates uh, is called the flanking transmission. If you are more familiar with uh, ISTM metrics, uh, you will have the same problem. So you will calculate the direct transmission and the flanking transmission. We already said that uh, wooden structure, like all lightweight construction, do not have an high acoustic performance at low frequencies. And uh, for this purpose, we need to stop the propagation of the vibration through the structure in order to obtain a reduction of the noise transmission. In order to do that, uh, we need to use uh, a resilient product, which are elastic separating layers between rigid elements whose main task is to prevent the transmission of vibration in the building structure. I have already anticipated that uh, we need to use the principle of disconnection. So this construction technique that keeps uh, uh, elements isolated and uh, separated in order to avoid the transmission of vibration and uh, of the noise through the structure. Uh, the principle of disconnection consists in a uh, uh, mechanical model which is mass spring mass. Uh, the first mass is, for example, a wall. The second mass is, for example, the slab. And the spring uh, between them is the resilient profile, so uh, an elastic material. We will see that uh, it is not just an elastic material, but also the material should have um, viscosous properties. So from a mechanical point of view, uh, the profile that we um, install between uh, uh, the two mass uh, works like a spring and a damper. The elastic component of the material, which is the spring of the system, dissipate energy uh, bouncing. And uh, the uh, damping component of the material stop the spring from the bouncing and transform uh, the motion uh, into viscous friction. Of course, it is important to have both of the components uh, in order to have uh, the dissipation of energy. If you think about the spring, you need to consider that uh, it is very important to have the proper load applied on the spring uh, because just image that uh, you uh, to apply a uh, very high low on uh, a very weak spring. This spring will be compressed and it will not work. Uh, on the other side, if you don't apply enough uh, load uh, on the spring, and the spring is very strong, uh, the, apply, uh, the spring will not uh, activate and uh, it will remain rigid. Uh, another example that maybe can help you uh, to can help you to understand the uh, behavior of their profile and uh, to the importance of the load. Uh, just think about uh, the shock absorber of the car. Uh, if you image to uh, apply the, uh, a shock absorber uh, of a truck under a city car, uh, you will understand that it will not work uh, in the proper way. Or vice versa, if you apply the shock absorber of a, a city car under a truck, it will not work. Uh, so uh, acoustic profile will work at the same way. Uh, we have discussed about, let's say, of the mechanical behavior of the system, but we can uh, uh, define it from an acoustic point of view too. Uh, so from an acoustic point of view, we would like to create a decoupled system in order to reduce the um, propagation of vibration in the into the system. Uh, we can define the system decoupled if the resonant frequencies is exceed. And so first of all, we need to calculate the resonance frequencies. Um, 
here are formula uh, that allowed us to calculate uh, the resonance frequencies of the system. Um, so uh, first of all, we need uh, to uh, know the uh, elastic properties of the material, which is defined with S, and then we need to know the load applied on the material, which is defined with the M. Um, so it, mm, it is clear that uh, it is not possible to estimate the resonance frequencies if we don't know the load applied on the profile. And if we cannot uh, calculate the resonance frequencies, we cannot define if the system is decoupled or not. For this reason, uh, there are no acoustic profile that can work without knowing the uh, load applied on them. Uh, and here are an example. For example, for um, many times of acoustic profile, instead of using the formula, uh, we use uh, graphs. Um, so first of all, we need to define the load. It is very important that the building has very good acoustic performance during the uh, normal life of the building. It is not so important to have a uh, very good uh, uh, acoustic performance at the ultimate state. For this reason, it is important to estimate the load uh, considering the real condition. We recommend uh, to consider just the dead load without any coefficient and half of the leaf load without any coefficient. This allowed us to have an estimation of the load closer to the real condition. After the estimation of the load, we can enter into the graphs uh, here. Uh, knowing the load, for example, 0 0.2 uh, Newton pro square millimeters, and uh, we can estimate the natural frequencies. At this point, we can divide the design uh, frequencies, for in this example, uh, 50 hertz, uh, to the uh, natural frequencies. With this value, in this case 2.27, we can enter into the graph of the transmissibility and estimate the acoustic benefit. Sometimes uh, uh, you can find a table of use of the resilient profile. Uh, the table of use uh, is defined uh, considering the the, that the profile should work between 20 and 30 hertz. So in this case, the uh, applicable compression uh, is already uh, is pre-calculated from us in order to have the minimum and the maximum value in order to guarantee that the profile will work in the range between 20 and 30 hertz. This calculation that we have seen um, take in consideration the profile working, but it does not take in consideration uh, the influence of the uh, fastening system. For this reason, Rotoblas, in collaboration with the University of Bologna, have founded um, a measurement campaign in order to uh, estimate the behavior of some typical uh, junction in CLT buildings. Old measurements were uh, carried out in compliance with ISO 10848 and uh, the purpose of this experimental measurement was uh, to uh, define KIJ for CLT junction. Before this measurement campaign, there were no uh, experimental data on K of KIJ on CLT structure. KIJ is the uh, vibration reduction index and uh, it is important for the calculation of uh, uh, flanking transmission. In particular, uh, we have already seen that if we need to measure the uh, uh, acoustic performance of a wall, we need to consider the uh, direct transmission and the flanking transmission. The flanking transmission um, depends uh, on different parameters. Uh, the first one uh, is the type of structure. The second one is the uh, type of finishing uh, applied uh, on, for example, on the wall. 
And uh, then uh, there is this KIG, which is, as I said, the vibration reduc reduction index, and uh, which uh, and it defines the influence uh, uh, of the connection into uh, into the propagation of vibration. So it is very different if we have uh, walls uh, and uh, slab connected uh, with uh, many uh, fasting system if we have or not um, resilient profile and so on. Uh, same same things is if you are used to uh, calculate with uh, STM metrics. So um, the, the formula is exactly the same. Uh, for the s uh, setup of the test, we used uh, CLT panels produced by seven different manufacturers in order to uh, have an average value which was not affected by the type of CLT. Probably you already know that uh, some manufacturers glue the CLT lamellas on the on tree side, uh, others producers uh, glue uh, the lamellas just on one side and so on. We also tested CLT, three layer CLT and five layer CLT. We tested different uh, junction, uh, connection between wall and wall, uh, and the connection wall the slab. We uh, tested the different type uh, of uh, angle brackets and the uh, different type and number of screw. Of course, we also tested the, the different of having and not having uh, resilient layers. Here are some pictures of the test setups. Uh, we used the panels at real dimension. Uh, this was uh, to uh, have results that uh, can be also used in the calculation. Uh, due to the big dimension of the test setup, uh, the test was carried out in our warehouse. Um, for this reason, during the measurement, the uh, temperature and relative humidity was controlled. And of course, the uh, warehouse was not working during the measurement. And here an example of uh, uh, X junction between uh, uh, four. So the connection between four uh, walls. And here are configuration in which we tested the performance of uh, the slab. Uh, for the measurement, uh, uh, we use the shaker and the uh, pink noise filter and um, actually for the uh, measurement we use a uh, different type of shakers in order to have results that will not be affected by the type of instrument of course all the measurement uh, were carried out in accordance with uh, ISO 10848 and here I would like to show you some uh, results. Um, there are, we have done many measurements. I would like to show you just some examples in order to understand uh, the meaning of this campaign. Of course, if you are interested, you can find more results in our catalog. So here, our uh, first example, uh, it is an X junction uh, between wall and wall. And uh, uh, between uh, a wall, we have installed uh, this uh, APDM uh, profile. Actually, the, uh, this product was designed for air um, When you have CLT site and you cannot tape uh, the junction, you can put this compressible uh, APDM between, between walls. But APDM is an elastic material and for this reason we have tested it in order to understand what happened uh, from an acoustic point of view. So here you can see the uh, setup. So we have an X junction 
without uh, uh, construction ceiling, so without the acoustic profile, and uh, then uh, the same configuration in which is applied the construction ceiling. And here the results. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the KIJ uh, increases if we uh, have the um, acoustic uh, profile. Uh, I would like just to remind you that KIJ is uh, vibration reduction index. So Iger is the value, Iger is the reduction of vibration, Iger is the acoustic performance. So in this case we can see that uh, if we add uh, this uh, elastic material between walls we will have an increase uh, of the acoustic performance. Uh, we have also tested a uh, wall floor junction and in which we have put uh, and in which we have installed uh, the uh, Brazilian uh, acoustic profile. So here the uh, setup. So we have a wall and a slab. Uh, 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 as fastening system, we have used uh, partially 3D screws and uh, uh, between the floor and, uh, and wall, we have installed uh, the resilient profile xylophone. Uh, in this case, we don't have any load applied on the profile. I would like to remind you that uh, from an acoustic point of view, it is a result from the safety side because uh, a profile which is not properly loaded uh, will uh, dissipate energies uh, from an Iger um, Resonant, uh, resonance frequencies and so it will not have the best performance that it could but even in this situation in which the profile is not properly loaded we can appreciate an improvement of the acoustic uh, performance and so it is a very good uh, uh, results because uh, even if the the profile is not properly loaded it works and uh, provide us a benefit. In my opinion, one of the most interesting results is the influence of the number and type of screws. Uh, we have tested the same junction uh, and we have changed the number of screws and the type of screws. We will see that uh, there, is a there is a lot of difference in the acoustic performance. In the first case, we have um, installed uh, partially 3D screws and every 20 centimeters in a L junction and the KIJ is quite low, 5.5. Uh, if we reduce the number of uh, the screws, uh, the KIJ increase. Uh, this is due to the fact that the screws are uh, rigid uh, elements that transmit uh, vibration. Uh, the interesting part is that if we change the type of screws and instead of using uh, partially treated screws we use uh, fully treated screws, we will have an improvement of the acoustic performance. In this case we have the same junction, we have the Fully 3D screws installed every 30 centimeters, so they are closer than the previous example, but the acoustic performance is higher. Uh, as we already seen, in the if we use uh, partially 3D screws every 40 centimeters, we have a KIJ uh, of 8.1. Uh, if we use uh, fully 3 3 screws every 30 centimeters, the KIJ increased to 12.4. Uh, it is an uh, interesting result and it is due to the fact that we don't have the uh, contribution of the head of the screw, which uh, uh, because the head um, brings the element to a closer contact 
and of course if we have this closer contact the vibration will for the vibration it is easier to pass from an uh, element to another uh, of course if we separate the screw uh, the uh, acoustic performance will increase in order to understand a little bit better the um, these results I would like to let you hear uh, this uh, um, uh, YouTube video uh, in which you can appreciate the difference of using different type uh, of fastening system and using or not uh, resilient profile. In the first example you, uh, you will hear a uh, different uh, of the type of sound. So what is change is the frequencies. Uh, in the second one, which is a wall-to-wall -wall connection, uh, we will change the, the, the type of screws. In this case, you will notice uh, different of decibels. So let's say uh, the volume of the, uh, of the sound will change. And uh, in the third case, with and without resilient profile too, you will appreciate the difference. Of course, uh, the performance of the acoustic profile will be uh, better if we load it in the proper way. In that case, we have just the weight of the, um, of the slab. Um, in order to estimate all the configuration, we have also developed a uh, software in which it is possible to um, define the configuration of our joint. Um, in this case, uh, the University of Bologna have developed an uh, analytic uh, method to uh, combine uh, uh, the different uh, measurement results in order to make us uh, to make uh, it possible to uh, define more configuration than the one that we have measured um, this project uh, uh, was published in different conferences uh, because it was uh, a very innovative uh, uh, measurement that provide uh, data that there was not ava uh, available available uh, up that day. Of course, if you are interested in having more material, please contact us and we will provide you uh, more uh, information. Uh, the second step of our uh, investigation was to understand the, the uh, behavior uh, of uh, um the structural behavior of the uh, resilient profile. We have seen that 
the um, fastening system influence the acoustic performance. So the second step was to understand if the resilient profile uh, affect the uh, statical behavior of the fastening system. Because uh, in this case, we don't have a, uh, a general connection, uh, for example, steel to steel timber, but we have steel resilient profile timber. And uh, according to uh, this, uh, according to this, we have noticed that um, the thickness uh, of the material will influence the static performance of the uh, fastening system. Uh, we have seen that uh, having um, a resilient profile will not affect too much the final connection, the connection if uh, the thickness of the profile is 6 millimeters. Uh, if we have uh, 7 millimeters, the decrease of the uh, static performance is quite high. And for this reason, we have chosen to have a very stable material that is only 6 millimeters thick. Uh, we have also certified the, um, the values uh, for uh, an ETA, so in order to have recognized value for uh, the angle breakers uh, com in combination with the acoustic profile. Uh, please note that these values are uh, calculated and in that case the notified body uh, considered uh, the uh, acoustic profile as air and it caused a quite high reduction of the uh, static performance of the profile. Um, we have also uh, measured the uh, uh, shear resistance of a connection uh, timber to timber. And uh, here are some results in which we can see that if we don't have pretension, uh, the connection timber to timber has a uh, better share perfor performance, but if we uh, have some pretension, so if we apply some loads uh, on the connection, uh, the connection timber xylophone timber uh, has um, higher or at least uh, the same uh, share uh, resistance of a connection timber to timber. This is due to the fact that we have a uh, uh, contribution of the friction. For this reason, we have tried to estimate the friction between uh, wood and uh, xylophone. Uh, we have uh, tested different configuration uh, in order to understand if uh, some of these parameters influence the friction. So we have tested with different wood moisture, uh, on different CLT surface, narrow and side face in order to simulate a connection between wall and the slab. Uh, we have uh, tested it with uh, different uh, materials, so spruce and birch. Uh, we applied uh, um, different uh, normal force and we tested with different xylophone hardness. Of course, uh, Friction can be considered only if there is a perfect contact between wood and xylophone. If we don't have this perfect uh, contact, of, of course, friction will not activate. And here the results. We have noticed that uh, wood moisture, CLT surface, counter material uh, does not influence um, the friction. Uh, normal force... Um, does not affect uh, uh, the friction. Uh, the important thing is to have uh, a little bit uh, force in order to um, guarantee the perfect contact. What uh, uh, affects uh, the friction is the uh, type of uh, xylophone and the hardness of the profile. Uh, the static friction decreases with uh, xylophone hardness, of course. When we developed the profile, we uh, have chosen a material that uh, 
is very very stable because we need to remind that the profile is installed inside uh, the building and that uh, uh, for this reason having deformation uh, uh, creeps and so on will affect uh, also the static performance of the um, of the building so uh, from a mechanical point of view we have uh, chosen a material that does not have a uh, creep actually uh, as you can see after our first uh, the deformation which is due to the load applied we will not have an increasing of the deformation and then uh, uh, we have also chosen a material that have a very linear deformation uh, this was this is very important because if we uh, don't estimate the load in the proper way we need to make sure that the profile will not be affected by uh, a different load so of course uh, acoustic performance will change and so on but from a static point of view we will not have problems the profile will be installed inside a timber building so the fire behavior of the product it is also important we have tested the uh, this the xylophone installed uh, exposed to a uh, flame and protected by two different type of sealant and here the results uh, as you can see uh, there is no big difference between using or not using the sealant uh, and uh, what we can see is that the um, profile, let's say, burns uh, at the same speed of wood. Um, so having uh, the profile or not having the profile, it is the same. And in our opinion, it is very important to guarantee the stability of the building uh, if we will have uh, a fire. because. Uh, here the results of the test. We have uh, stopped the test after 60 minutes and we have seen that uh, the uh, there will not have an increase of the temperature um, on the uh, unexposed surface and uh, we have seen that uh, uh, there was no um, smoke on the other side uh, of uh, the building. Um, we have also made some homemade tests in order to understand the behavior of the uh, profile uh, in different condition, like here with uh, water. So we have uh, uh put the profile different type of profile in water and we have uh, then take a look in what happened after that uh, xylophone is a monolithic uh, mixture of polyurethane and it will not absorb water compared to other type of uh, uh, profile in foam or cork and it is very important because uh, the profile will not bring water inside the structure uh, so uh, even if it rains or this kind of stuff the profile will not work as a sponge and this is very important for the durability of the timber building at the end when we uh, design and study a resilient profile uh, that need to be installed inside the structure uh, we need to consider the acoustic performance of the product and we have seen how to do that but we need to take in consideration that uh, there is uh, the influence of uh, the fastening system in particular we have seen that fastening system influence the acoustic performance and then that uh, the type of acoustic profile that we choose influence the static performance of the connector. It is important to find a balance uh, between these two elements because if the, uh, uh, the resilient profile affects too much 
the static performance of the building, we need to increase the number of fastening system and having a lot of fastening system affect the acoustic performance. So it is very important to find a balance. Uh, we need to remember that the um, profile will be installed inside the uh, inside the structure. For this reason, it's very important to guarantee a very stable uh, uh, material with good mechanical performance uh, that will not affect the durability of the building and, if it's possible, that have a good uh, fire reaction. But, of course, uh, working on the flanking transmission is not enough to guarantee a good performance of uh, uh, timber structure. It is very important to guarantee a reduction of the direct transmission. Same uh, as if we talk about ISTM metrics. Uh, for this reason, uh, Rotoblast have measured uh, some uh, typical solution um, for CLT. Uh, we can see that we can work on the finishing. For example, here is a solution with CLT exposed. And uh, here the solution in which uh, we have added a uh, suspended ceiling and we can see that we have an improvement of the uh, acoustic performance. And uh, uh, here an example of, of how the detail matters. We have a solution uh, in which uh, we have uh, installed a resilient profile between plasterboard panels and the structures and we can see that uh, this elastic material that separates the plasterboard uh, increases the acoustic performance of the partition. This makes perfectly sense because uh, the plasterboard panels vibrate but the vibration will not be transmitted to the structure because there is an elastic material that dissipates part of the energy. And so we can see that we have, in this case, a benefit of 4 decibel. Uh, another technique is to increase the uh, superficial mass uh, of the partition. In this case, we have coupled the uh, plasterboard panels with a uh, um, bituminous, very heavy uh, membrane and uh, increasing the uh, superficial uh, surface uh, and increasing the loads of the superficial surface increase the acoustic performance of the, um, uh, of the partition. So before we have uh, 40 uh, 54 and then we have 59 decibel. Now I will show you a calculation of the influence of the openings. So uh, the results are uh, given according to ISO standards. Um, actually, uh, the result will not be so different if you are uh, used to work with ISTM. So I think that the uh, example can be easily understand for uh, all of you. So, uh, first case, we have a wall without openings. So, uh, the uh, performance of the wall and the performance of the facade will be the same. So, what we have, let's say, measured in the laboratory, and uh, it would be more or less the same that we will have at the in the final building if we had the flanking transmission, of course. Uh, but if we add a wall, no, sorry, but if we add a um, window, we, uh, we will have a, a reduction of the acoustic performance, especially if we choose a poor window. Uh, in this case, we have, a, uh, we have this, but we have added a window which has an uh, air of uh, 30 decibel. Uh, the final performance of the facade will be uh, 38 decibel. The problem is that in this case we cannot work on the wall, so it does not make sense to improve the 
performance of the wall because in the case three we can see that we have uh, installed uh, in the wall uh, some uh, improvement and we have reached uh, 60 decibel but the final performance have not changed because we are always uh, around the thir uh, 38 decibel. This is due to the fact that noise can pass through the window. Uh, what we need to do is to work uh, on the window and we need to choose a better performance of the window. So if we have the same wall as before, so 48 decibel, but we have increased the window performance uh, to 38 decibel. We have an improvement of the performance of the facade up to 45 decibel. So, and this was the only way to improve uh, the final results. Um, of course, the installation matters and be careful about the details. For example, um, installing the window avoiding a direct passage uh, of the air will increase the uh, uh, the acoustic performance uh, of the partition because i would like to remind you that air is one of the main medium through which sound waves propagate uh, so of course also the installation of the window matters i would like to uh, remind you that it's very important to use the appropriate solution to avoid uh, the uh, propagation uh, of the uh, sound wave through the air. So it is important to seal uh, the connection between window and uh, structure. In conclusion, I would like to remind you that in order to reach uh, good uh, acoustic performance in timber construction, it is important to uh, choose right material um, and working on with uh, tested solution and uh, adding uh, elastic material and uh, plasterboard panels and uh, suspended ceiling and so on. It is very important to work on flanking transmission because keep elements isolated will reduce the transmission of vibration. And then ver be careful on the details uh, in order uh, to guarantee a very high performance. So air tightness is very important to avoid the propagation of the sound waves through the air. I would like to thank you for your attention. Here is my email. If you have uh, more questions, you, you can write me. Thank you.